Hi guys, welcome to Monday Night Mashup with me, Manny Chima. Uh, I come to you after this weekend's awesome tournament that's just happened, the Eight Nations, uh, where I was representing England and we won! Woo! Uh, Team England came first place, so that was awesome. And it's um, it's a really good event, it's just getting bigger and bigger every year. So it could be the first thing that we talked about tonight. So... The event started off as the Six Nations, and it's normally Team Team England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Team Belgium. And this year we wanted to sort of expand so that it became a bigger practice event for the ETC. So uh, we tried to get some more teams involved, and the Dutch and the Danes also came this year, so it was the Eight Nations. And, you know, hopefully next year, maybe it stays at Eight Nations or it grows we don't want it getting smaller, really. So hopefully you can get a little bit. Hopefully it gets a little bit bigger, and we get more and more people joining in because it's a fantastic opportunity for all the teams and their players to um, get on, you know, get out there and actually have proper, meaningful practice for when they go to the ETC. And yeah, it was just it was a really really good event. Uh, all the teams came down. Everybody was lovely. The venue is obviously Element Games, which is always great. So that's awesome. <laughs> and then basically we had some tough, tough rounds. Um, round one was very exciting. Obviously, I can't I can't talk about lists too much uh, because for, for obvious reasons, uh, you know, the, the teams want to keep what they're doing to themselves and things like that. It was a closed practice event. But um, round one was amazing. We played uh, we played the Danish team in on the, on the first morning. And Denmark are really, really strong opponents right now. They've got some awesome players. Uh, they work well as a team. They get their pairings done well. And they bring some cool lists. And we, as England, we drew with the Danes on on the first round of the first day. I was like, wow, we're starting with a draw, you know, the, we, we didn't win a round. Uh, at least it wasn't a loss, but it was a draw. So we had a really, really close round with the Danes. And then after that, we went on to play the two Irish teams. Um, one of the rounds was absolutely amazing. We, we got 157 points out of 160 possible. So we did really well as a team for that round. Um, the next round was also really good. We got over 100 points against the other Irish team. Um, and then that, that put us in a good place because it meant that we were one of the top two teams from our four. So the way it was working this year was you have two groups of four, then you play three games, and the two teams that are, the, that are in first and second in each group play the two teams that are in first and second of the other group in the two games on the Sunday. And the... Um, Teams at the bottom of the groups play each other as well on the Sunday, <clears throat> just to get all the teams switching around and playing each other. And then day two, day two was a very hard day as well. We played the Welsh um, and the Scots, so that was interesting. Played Wales and Scotland uh, on the Sunday. We played Wales first, I believe. Yes, we played Wales first, and that was an interesting round. We paired well. Uh, and it looked like it was going okay. Then uh, somewhere through the round, it looked like it was dipping, and we were, you know, we were trying our best to stay on top. And then all of a sudden, boof, we came back up as well, and we won that round. And then we played the Scots in the in the final round, and I feel like we paired really well in that round. And the games were close on points to start with, and a couple of things just swung our way, which really helped us uh, to beat the Scots as well and take first place so that was really good um we have a viewer uh if you could just drop me a like so that i know you guys can hear me uh and everything is okay that would be awesome okay um carrying on so that was the eight nations and what we wanted to do today is you know because i you know i'm a massive thank you to all of you guys because you guys are making all of this possible uh glass hammer you guys are you know making glass have a hammer bigger you're supporting us we're all growing the community together and what we wanted to do was give you guys sort of like the idea of what our plans are for the 
for the near future and what we are going to do with sort of the next few events uh, which we'll have coming up. And we thought you guys deserve to know first because you were the ones who are primarily supporting us more than anybody else. So just like as a bit of a thank you, we thought we'd update you in this video. And what we're planning, so as you all know, me and Dan have been working on Glass Hammer quite hard, but um, Dan's, uh, Dan's also been working on another job. I'm currently at university and it's, it's, it's hard for us at the moment. <clears throat> However, uh, my university finishes in 10 days, guys. We have 10 days. My, I have an exam this Friday, an exam on Monday, and then an exam next Friday. And next Friday is my final thing. I never have to go to uni again. Fingers crossed, hopefully. Never have to go to university after that. And the 17th of May, in 10 days' time, will be the day that me and Dan go full-time glass hammer, and we'll be able to give you a lot more content uh, one of the things that we're planning on doing is doing like a weekly streamed game as well. So, you know, I, I think you probably all watch the battle reports and I hope you're enjoying them. And what we'll be doing as well is one of the days in the week, <clears throat> probably one of the weekdays, yeah, because we know everybody is either, you know, you watch the battle reports on weekends or you go to uh, family pub functions, you have stuff to do, but also... Quite a lot of you go to tournaments on the weekend, so you won't, don't want to be doing stuff when you guys are at tournaments that you're going to miss. So possibly on a weekday evening, we'll be streaming one game a week. So, you know, just so you guys can talk to us live while we're playing, pick our brains about what, what we're doing in each, uh, in each turn in the game, why we've done what we've done, and all of that kind of stuff. We just thought it'd be, it'd be lots of fun for everybody to be involved together. And then the other thing we wanted to talk about was tournaments. So really, really wanted to talk about tournaments um, and just see what you guys make of it. See what you guys think about what we're trying to do. So as soon as we finish university on the 17th, me and Dan are going to sit down and we're going to go through the calendar and we're going to come up with dates to run tournaments on a monthly basis. So what we're trying to do is now we've got enough boards mats and terrain for 60 tables uh, we can start to try and do a tournament uh, every month uh, they, they won't be huge to start with there'll be small monthly tournaments sort of 40 to 50 man events and if they but if there's a large demand if these if the first one or two months the tournaments just sell out really quickly then we will expand and we'll make the monthly tournaments uh, a bit bigger we're literally just looking to grow the competitive community of 40k in the midlands um all over the uk really anybody's welcome to come uh or you know international players if you guys want to head over then um we've had lots of international players come to our big tournaments sort of the glass hammer open of last year and st george's champion just gone this year and uh, it's been real good fun so yeah anybody's welcome to come but obviously we're trying to grow the community here we want more and more competitive players coming to the scene uh it's why we're trying to run as many events as we possibly can so yeah, we'll be we'll be trying to go to to uh, a monthly event, an event every month, and then uh, what we're looking to do on top of that, and we're trying to make a a big event. So what we are trying to do, I think we're going to trial it. Woo, Midlands! Hey Jason, how you doing, bro? Um, great to see you here. Hope you're having a good evening. So uh, you've made it just in time for the big one. So we're about to talk about what we're going to do with big tournaments moving forwards. So hopefully we can get every tournament to this stage, maybe even the monthly ones, if there is enough interest, which I think there will be. Uh, are you planning on hosting the tournaments locally? Uh, yeah, bro, there, there will be local to us uh, where we are at the moment uh, in Telford. Uh, we're looking for... We're looking to speak to the the venue uh, where we had the St George's champion just now because it was a it was a big success and everybody really liked it. We had lots of positive feedback, and the people who were running the venue and in charge were actually really good to communicate with, and we you know they gave us uh, they gave us a really good deal on on all the stuff, so that was really good. So we're trying to we're in talks with them about uh you know sort of the costs and. How much it would cost us if we wanted more room in that in the in the venue if we wanted uh, a couple more of the halls not just the one hall if you wanted to add a couple more on to make the event bigger 
and things like that. So we are in talks with them at the moment and hopefully we can make this happen. I think there'll be enough interest to make it so that the monthly tournaments are like this. Uh, but to start with, we will be trialing it at the Glass Hammer Open. So the Glass Hammer Open, as you all know, is one of the two big events that we do every year. And well, I say every year, we've only just started last year. <laughs> so there's only been one Glass Hammer Open so far, but it will be on a yearly basis, of course. And it will be held towards um, October slash November time of this year. We're looking at October and hoping to have it in the October period. And um, what we're looking to do for the event is we're going to try to make it a 200 man event, a 200 man event. And if it sells out, if it sells out and we're hoping that it will sell out because the this next main point will hopefully draw people in. And personally, I am so gutted that I won't be playing in it because this is so awesome. Um, and what we're thinking about doing is whoever wins the Glass Hammer Open gets a thousand pound prize. So I think lots of people would be interested in that. And uh, I think, you know, it, it's the kind of prize for first place that would draw more people into the competitive community. We're hoping the event sells out. And I mean, what it will tell us is the event selling out will tell us that there's more and more people out there that do want to get involved in competitive 40k gaming. And what we're trying to do is give you guys something awesome to play for, you know, something really big that, you know, will be significant and it won't just be like, oh yeah, I won the glass hammer open and I got a box set. We want to be, we want to be renowned for one of the tournaments. As you all know, like what we were saying at the start when we were launching the first St. George's Champion is that we want to be known for giving awesome prizes out to our winners because they deserve it. They've come there, they've played their best and they've, you know, they've, they've done it. They've won the event. So we thought that the best way to do it is to give someone a big, big prize. So the first place prize at the Glass Hammer Open, if the event sells out, will be a, well, we th we want it to be a £1,000 prize for first place. And we'll, we hope that you guys will all come and get involved with that as well. You know, and good luck. Hopefully one of you, you know, might win that. So that'd be awesome. And basically, we just wanted to hear your thoughts on it and what you guys thought. So... If you guys have anything you want to say about it or if you have any any advice uh, on, you know, what you want to see, any ideas, things like that, or whether you guys would be happy to come to a tournament which offered a prize like that. And we just we just want to know what you guys think, really. And we thought, who better to ask than our most trusted supporters, the members of the Glass Hammer Elite. So here we are asking you guys what you think. And yeah, uh, please, please get in touch with us and tell us what you think about it, because we're really excited about it. And we're hoping that um, if if Glass Hammer Open is a is a huge success, if it does work out, if we sell out and people are really happy, we have a champion who gets a massive prize. If people really like what we're trying to do here, then we will do the same thing for St. George's Champion next year. We will make St. George's Champion a massive tournament where the winner gets a, a massive prize. And, you know, if we grow, we, we will do the same thing for the big events every year. And who knows, maybe the maybe the prizes for the monthly events will get slightly bigger as well. If the monthly if there's demand for the monthly events to be become big as well. So we're really excited about it. However, we would love to hear your opinions because, you know, it's it's you guys that we that we're running the events for. So, yeah, guys, let us know. Now, uh, now that we've talked about tournaments, it's enough talk about tournaments. Uh, I, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Uh, one of the things is that uh, Dan has submitted our um, St. George's Champion results. He submitted them to the ITC rankings now. So your rankings should change, hopefully very soon. Yo, Ash, how you doing, bro? Actually, Ash, you know, you've just come in. Um, let me, let me just repeat the last, last point for myself. Cause I think you 
probably one of the people that's going to be very excited about it. Um, what we're thinking about doing is um, the Glass Hammer Open. We're thinking about making it in October a 200-man event. And if the event sells out, uh, we're going to try to give the first place, uh, person who places first, a £1,000 prize. How would you feel about that? What, what would you think? Do you think it's a good idea? Would you come if that was the prize? Um, yeah, we just want to know what you guys think about it. Okay, yeah, so moving on. Yeah, Dan has put, uh, he's submitted all of our scores, uh, all of your guys' scores, shall I say, for St. George's Champion to the ITC standings, and they hopefully will be changing the standings very soon, and you will see your points increase, and so. Uh, Ash, I'll take it now. <laughs> you're still going to play for it, bro. Come on, you're still going to pay for it. And like I said, man, I'm so gutted I won't be playing, because that's so awesome. <laughs> I would love it. But yeah, uh, exciting times. Uh, the rankings are going up. And for all of you guys um, in the Elite page, we wanted to say to you specifically, we've now entered a group, uh, a group, uh, a group section to the ITC standings where, you know, when you sign up for events on BCP, it asks you what team you play for. So we've now added a team called Glasshammer Elite, capital G on the Glasshammer. Uh, I'll just I'll just type it exactly what the name is of the group. Glasshammer. So it's Glasshammer with a capital G and then Elite all in capitals. So there we go. I've just put it up there in the chat, guys, so you can see. Uh, we've called it that, Glasshammer Elite. And that's the group that we're all gonna that we're gonna be under when we go to events. So all of our points will be added onto there. And all of you guys who go to ITC events that are in the elite chat, of feel free to use the Glasshammer Elite team because you are you are our Glasshammer Elite team. So you know, feel free to put your team down as Glasshammer Elite, and maybe we can you know give the other teams that are winning up there. Uh, run for their money and put glass hammer at the top guys let's do it <laughs> but yeah so that's the talk about tournaments for the week and i thought at the end we could talk a little bit about imperial knights so me uh me dan and lad we uh filmed a battle report uh this week earlier on and it will be available on saturday uh, this saturday coming and it was <laughs> Adds Imperial Knights and Ad Mech and Bobby G. Um, oh, 200, 200 person tournament sounds awesome. But with the way the meta is at the moment, without sounding like a pessimist, won't it, won't, won't it just turn into 200 people playing the same Guard, Eldar and Chaos lists? Any ideas on how to make it appeal to people that want to play competitively, but not just with meat lists or armies? Hmm. So I do I do understand what you're saying there, Ash. It's a it's a good point. It is a good point. Uh but uh what we're trying to base it on is the the sort of mindset the the sort of mindset that we want to encourage is the competitive mindset. We're thinking about the big prize for you know to draw people in. It is something that, you know, is a is a big standing point that might pull people in. Uh, I do get what you're saying about the armies and people want to use other armies too, fun armies. You know, people are more than welcome to do so. Um, and yeah, I mean, there, there is the whole Guard, Eldar and Chaos lists. But um, what we've kind of looked at is we looked a lot at the ITC because, as we all know, the ITC are very, you know, very, very popular at the moment. And they've they've done amazing work. They're They're so big right now. And they, what they're doing works. And, you know, they they give the winner of the ITC every year a, a big cash prize. I believe it was $4,000 this year for the winner of the ITC. But that that even that tournament doesn't really, like, put too many people off. I mean, when we were looking at the final eight, there was, there was an ad mech army up there. There were orcs up there. There was a guard imperial soup up there. And then there was Eldar up there. So there, there was a like a diverse range at the top. There were different builds up there. It wasn't oh, and there was a chaos list as well. There weren't there weren't just the like just the just the top list. So in the final eight, there were like four to five different factions being used. 
So that was really interesting. It's I don't think we're going to have all the people using the same stuff because you you normally don't at the events. But yeah, I get it because we're doing a big prize. They might do. But, you know, that's that's also a part of competitive gaming. People want to bring the best thing that they can. So, you know, it, it's going to make harder games for people, which is cool. But also, uh, one of the things to consider is that quite a lot of the people who come to our events are ETC players. And, you know, they, they play for sort of, um, they, they sort of help. Uh, sorry, they sort of, they play for Team England, Team Scotland, Wales, Belgium, some of the international countries, Ireland and Northern Ireland. So uh, all of those players, they sometimes have like a like specific faction that they're trying to use for their team. So they'll be practicing that. So like, for example, uh, uh, St. George's champion, quite a few of the England players were down, but they were trialing lists that maybe they were going to use for teams events and stuff like that but they had lots of fun with it and they still placed quite well and we'll still have loads of people doing that so i still think people will see people will bring the armies that they love to use there's no incentive not to do that but it will just uh we're just thinking about giving something amazing uh to first place but yeah we can we could definitely have a look into that actually maybe we could uh jason what you said maybe we could sort of split split it between different things I uh, think that a large prize helps, but best in faction helps too for large events to help arrange to help a range of armies. No, yeah, I totally get that, Jason. That's really good. But um, and this is why this is why we thought we'd put it to you guys first because you guys you guys are the ones that were running the events for. I mean, yeah, maybe we could look at. Oh yes, there we are. There we are. We're back. Sorry, guys, for that pause. Something just happened there. It said disconnected. Fetching, fetching the connection, uh, going to connect in, and then it was counting down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I'm back. Uh, yeah, I think that's really good feedback from you guys. Thank you very much. And yeah, we'll have we'll have a look at how we can maybe spread it across different things. So, or what we may do is we may uh, keep the uh, the bigger prize for uh, still the tournament winner, whoever comes first, but then do some cool stuff. For people who come best in faction, just to encourage people to play what they love as well. So thank you very much, guys. That's awesome feedback. Trotter, for clarity, I'm still tilted from yesterday's bat rep. <laughs> so guys, some crazy, ridiculous, lucky things happened in this bat rep uh, that will be coming out on Saturday that you you guys can all watch. Um, I won't tell you exactly what happened. Uh, because, you know, we don't want to ruin the bat rep for you. You guys want to watch it. But there was some insanely lucky things that went on. And basically, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Knights. Because Ad's night list that he put together. I have an article for you Thursday. Yes, Trier. Yes, he does. <laughs> uh, but yeah, guys. Um, what it is, is Knights are brilliant right now. I mean, yeah, they've... Uh, they got hit by the big FAQ a little bit because uh, the Castellan has gone up in points, and uh, he's still good. But I think he's I think he's good in a sort of like Sue place now. I don't think he's great in an army where you're going to take multiple knights. Personally, personally, I don't think he is. Um, but he's still great in a soup. It just means you've got to lose a hundred points from the soup that you would normally like to take. Which isn't that that bad. But I think what hurts him the most is when people take one, it's very hard for to hard to kill when he can have a three plus invulnerable save. But the rotate ion shield stratagem has now been capped, so knights can only get a maximum of a four plus invulnerable save and not a three plus anymore. So I think that really, really hurts the single Castellan in Imperial Army. In Imperial Soup Army, sorry. But knights as a whole are are pretty good, I think. Uh, because because of things like the Castellans got nerfed, the Castellan was one of, you know, it's one of the big things that people were using to kill other knights uh, Is was the Castellan. And now that he's gone up in points, we're going to see less of him, in my opinion. And it means that knights can come back out onto the field and do really well. So the knights that Ad was using were Tyrannus knights. And Tyrannus is... Pretty awesome at the moment if you use them in the right combination. You do need enough command points for them to work. 
Um, so, you know, you've got to find, figure out a way how you're going to do that. Uh, if you want to know more, you know, watch that battle report on Saturday and you'll see, you'll see, you know, this, the way that ad was using CPs was ridiculous. He got so many CPs and he did so many things which were cool. I mean, their knights can get back up. House Tyrannis, House Tyrannis knights can uh, come back once destroyed as long as they don't explode, which is absolutely awesome in my opinion. So that that's really huge. Then they have the stratagem where they can act normally, you know, act on top bracket. So you can bring a knight back with only D3 wounds, but it can act on top level. So it's still firing as if it had maximum wounds, which is absolutely amazing. And it's moving like that and it's charging like that. So, you know, they can pack a huge bunch. And they also have a six plus feel no pain, essentially, where every time you do a wound to one of the House Tyrannus Knights, they roll a dice on the six plus, they don't lose that wound. Uh, so it's it, it's huge. It, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, those Tyrannus Knights are very, very efficient, depending on what you take with them as well. But just, you know, guys, watch this battle report on Saturday. Uh, I think you guys will love it. It, it. It's an awesome bat rep. We have so much fun and lots of lucky things happen. Uh, you know, I won't tell you who for, you know, they might have happened for Ad, they might have happened for me. But they were some incredibly, incredibly lucky things that went on in that game. And it was a very, very tactical game. It's a, it's a very down-to-the-wire game, guys. It's a very down-to-the-wire game. It comes down to the very, very, very last turn. So very close game, very entertaining to watch. Um, so, yeah, please watch that, guys. And I hope you enjoyed this update on what we're going to do with our future events moving forward. And if you do have any more feedback, you know, drop us a message or feel free to message me privately or Dan or message us on the Glass Hammer page, you know, put your opinions out there and uh, we'll see what we could do. You know, we want to please everybody when we run these events. Um, also, um, I will be back on Friday night after, after my very first exam uh, with Open the Vaults, uh, uh, hopefully with a guest or two. And I will see you then, guys. Until then, have an awesome week. Take care.